brand is way too important to leave to marketing. And I'll explain what I mean. Uh, it's, it's a paraphrase on someone else's, uh, I think it was um, um, one of the Hewlett Packard guys who said that uh, marketing is too important to leave to marketing. I, I took it to brand. And what I mean by that specifically is that brand marketing cannot create a brand. You cannot take a, pardon my French, a shitty company with shitty service and tell marketing to create this beautiful, caring brand as if we love everyone and we take great care of our customers. That, that's, that's a fool's errand. It's never going to work. Um, creating a brand is a commitment that has to start from the CEO through every executive in the company and trickle down to the last tech support engineer, recruiting coordinator, um, product engineer. And I'll give you an example. So at Gong, the way we started creating our identity, even before we called it a brand, we did this really early on, I think in like 2017, when we were maybe 70 or 80 employees. We sat down our teams in the two countries where we're operating, and we said we, we want to come up with a set of principles, operating principles, that represent who we are, not who we aspire to be. Um, because when you look at companies who do that exercise, who we aspire to be, you get these HR posters of integrity and, and all that stuff. Oh, come on. Uh, who are you? What, what do you really stand for? Not what you want to be in some fairy tale book. And we came up with eight operating principles, and almost all of them were unique in the way that they represent our culture. And, and one of them is called raving fans. Create raving fans. That's what we're doing. And some, customer, some uh, companies will say we're customer-centric and we put the customer in the center and all that stuff. But what does that really mean? And we said our operating principle is we create raving fans. And that means if you're a recruiting coordinator, we want to see that after you notify a candidate that she did not get an offer, she still goes and write a positive review on Glassdoor because she had such a wonderful experience, you created a raving fan out of her. And if you go to our Glassdoor, you will see candidates who did not get an offer write raving reviews saying they hope one day we'll get back to them because, again, because we gave them such a great experience and they're sorry they didn't get an offer. If you're a tech support engineer and you're dealing with someone's really critical issue at 2 a.m., we want to know that you will do whatever it takes to create a raving fan. If you need to jump on a plane or send them something or do something, do it. You can never err on the side of the customer and create raving fans. And when everyone in the company and 1,300 employees does that, then the camp company can stand for creating raving fans. And it doesn't matter what marketing puts on the website or what HR puts on the poster. It's, it's really creating that. And we did that with every other thing. Like we have yep. an operating principle that's called no sugar, which talks about this is a unique combination of our Israeli and American culture of we don't sugarcoat problems. We talk about issues because nobody benefits from sweeping them under the rug. And if we talk about them directly in a respectful way, we can actually solve them together much more quickly. And that was a refreshing change in culture for many folks who came from companies where that was not part of the culture. They were trying to avoid talking about issues and conflicts and just be nice all day, but they never touched on the real issues. So that's, that's kind of how I think about, about brand and about building the culture. And just to finish this chapter, I'll say, marketing is at best the, the steward of yeah. the, the brand, the, the, the gatekeeper of the brand. You can't create it if it's not created and trickled down from the CEO down to the last employee.